Hello, my name is Oren from CompuMatter, and today I will be taking apart the Lenovo ThinkPad T580 for demonstration purposes. I've included chapters in this video so you can skip through them to go to the part you need. We'll cover doing a keyboard replacement, how to take out the screen and replace it, as well as opening up the bottom and seeing how to swap out RAM or potentially upgrade your hard drive, some other little components that you might need to take a look at. Without further ado, let's get into it. All right, now that we've taken off that back cover, we can see all of the components inside here, including that internal battery, which will be the first step. Removing that before you mess with any other components is definitely recommended. So in order to do that, you'll first need to remove this little cable that's kind of got the colored cables coming out of the battery here. And once you get that cable out, you can use your Phillips screwdriver and loosen and remove all the screws connected to the battery. Alright, now that we've done that, the battery is loose and can be removed from the system. This particular model that I'm working on actually has two batteries. One external that looks like this, and then that internal one that I just removed. That gives it extended battery life, which is really nice. For RAM removal, push down and outwards on the metal tab, remove, then seat it again by pressing it firmly into the right slot and then downwards. All right, and this is where the hard drive is going to be, whether it be an M.2 in this little adapter shell like it is for me, or a conventional or solid state drive in this piece. You'll be able to take it out like so and take a look at it. Now this piece is for the M.2 adapter. You have to remove two screws. Uh, you see the black screws on the top and the bottom here and here. And then once you've taken off that shell, you can access this M.2 screw here, remove that, and then you should be able to slide out the M.2 without any issues. If you wanted to upgrade it to another size, you can do that. Now for the SATA pieces, they look a little bit different. They may either have like a rubbery thing to take off, or you may have to unscrew it at the sides, remove the cable at the end, and then swap it out for whichever you'd like. And this is where the hard drive adapter or the M.2 adapter connects to the motherboard. And then this is your Wi-Fi card right here. You can disconnect these two little cables, unscrew it and pull it out. This is your CMOS battery, which you can take out with that little cable. Your fan's installed on this side here, and you can detach it with this cable as well as remove the screw. You'll have to take off this piece of tape here to detach it from the heat sink in order to fully swap it out. That can be done. 
All right, and this is where your speakers are located in your system, which can be gently removed. They will have a cable that plug in to the motherboard that you can detach. Just follow the cable and then go ahead and unplug it. This right here is going to be your charging port, which on this model, you actually have two. Camera's a little bit blurry, so let me fix that. All right. Okay, there goes the camera. So from here, I'm just gonna work backwards and show you putting the battery back into the system and the case back on. And then we'll move on to the next parts of this video, which is the keyboard replacement and the screen replacement. Feel free to skip ahead in the video if you want to go straight to the keyboard removal or the screen removal. I have chapters on the videos as well as in the description below that you can use to skip ahead. All right, and here we are at the keyboard replacement. Now this model, I love how easy it is to swap this out. All we need to do is loosen three screws here on the back after removing the battery, which if you want to also remove the internal battery first, it's recommended. So I'm gonna start with that. And then these are the three screws you want to loosen. They're the ones that are in the center. Once you've loosened those, flip it back around and get yourself a pry tool you can use. And then very gently take your tool and go between these two pieces here and lightly push up like so. And then keep going back and forth from left to the middle to the right until the whole keyboard is relatively loosened and you can lift it up with your fingers gently. And be mindful, there are two ribbon cables underneath this keyboard that are very, very fragile. So you can't just lift the keyboard out. So if I tilt it a little bit, you'll be able to see the two ribbon cables I'm talking about connected right here to the motherboard. So those will need to be removed. In order to do that, you'll have to flip up a little tab that's securing them on the top. And you can do that with your fingernail. Just flip up that little tab and then you can remove the ribbon cable. And same goes for this little one here. It's a little black tab that you flip up and then you can remove the cable and then you can take out the keyboard and install your new one. This is what the ribbon cables look like on the other side. So you'll have the orange one, the smaller one, and then that blue one. So from here on the new keyboard, you're gonna to wanna to take it and then those two ribbon cables that I showed you go into the slots you will have these little plastic tabs that are a little harder than the other piece of the ribbon cable that you can use to push it into the slot easier and then flip that plastic tab down to secure it into place.
From there, I start with the top and I push around and make sure the keyboard is secure. And then what I can do is once the keyboard is pretty firmly placed inside of that area again, I can slide the keyboard back down to make all of those little clips at the bottom reconnect. Once you've got that secured, you can flip the computer back over and tighten those three screws, put the battery back in, and then you're ready to test it out. All right, so here we are with the screen replacement. I really like how this model is for that. It's pretty straightforward. You just need to have something thin enough to fit between the bezel and the back frame here. So with that, you just carefully slide your little tool in here until you get it to bite and very, very gently go around the edges like so, just kind of doing one of these motions to get it out. Very gentle wiggle. And you'll hear little clip noises as time goes on and it'll slowly begin to split apart. You're gonna have to do that on all of the edges. Now around where the webcam connects, it's a little bit tight, so definitely don't force it. So once you get to the point where you've gone around most of the, most of the way, you can begin to use your fingers to pry it off very gently, detaching it from the frame. And there will be a little bit of adhesive sticking onto it as well, so just be cautious of that. And that'll be down the sides as well as on the top, and then the majority of the adhesive is actually down here at the bottom where it connects here. So you can use your little pry tool to gently go between these two things here, and then you should be able to start to do the wiggle technique a little bit to loosen it further. Now these are clipped in here at the bottom corners, so I just use my pry tool and kind of do a little bit of a twisting motion to get it popped out. And then once that one's good, you can kind of do that wiggle to get it to loosen up more and then detach the clips here from the center and there is the bezel. And I also want to note the screen replacement part that you get, you're going to want to make sure it has the screw mounts, the metal pieces actually on it. I've seen in some cases that they don't come with these pieces and that would mean, you know, you wouldn't be able to attach it correctly. So with a Phillips screwdriver, the first step is removing those four screws. Alright, now that those are removed, you can just very carefully start to wiggle the screen to see if it'll come off. There, on my model here, it was actually kind of bent around this plastic piece here, so I had to pry it upwards a little bit to get it to loosen. Once you do that, you can tilt the screen very carefully forward. Remember, it's connected to a cable here at the bottom. And then I'm going to do a close-up of that and how to remove that cable here. Oh my gosh, I hope it won't be as difficult for you as it was for me. Once you remove that tape, you can actually lift up this... Well, it's kind of hard to see it in this here. Let me make sure I can get it. But it's this really tiny little bar. You can see that it's golden right here. That is holding this cable in place, so you'll need to lift it up and carefully wiggle it out. And now that you've detached that screen, you can get your new one and get ready to install it the same way.
Oh, and then also for reference, I wanted to show you here on the back, this is what your new screen's going to look like. It should have these screw mounts built into it. Another quick thing I wanted to touch on before installing the new screen is these hinges right here. There's gonna be three screws on each side. If you have any hinge issues or if you need to replace the back piece, you'll have to take those off. And then you'll also have to take out all of the wires really carefully, like the Wi-Fi cables on the right side there and then on the left of this black cable that comes up and around. And then another thing that you'll need to be cautious of is this ribbon cable that comes up and connects to your webcam. So go ahead and detach the ribbon cable and then you can very carefully pry out that webcam. It's attached with some adhesive and apply it to your new one. All right, so I'm gonna continue on here with the screen replacement. It's kind of the same process, but backwards. I'm gonna take in this piece here and then very, very carefully make sure it slides into place firmly and then click that bar forward and over it. And then finally put that annoying tape back over it to help make sure it's secure because it certainly will be. And before putting on the bezel, I typically want to test out the screen to make sure it's turning on and functioning. You can do that at this point before you screw it in, but I'm going to do that first in this example. All right, so I'm just gonna plug it into power here and then let's try turning it on, make sure the screen works. And it has life. Now that we've tested that and made sure it's working, we can put this bezel back on, be mindful of the clips and remove any particles that don't belong. <laughs> and now we're ready to install that piece again. There should be a little bit of adhesive left to help it stay on, but if not, if the bezel is continuously falling off, you can use just a little bit of double-sided tape in some places to help secure it, but definitely make sure you can just clip it in normally first as it's pretty snug on my end here. So just go around the edges here with your thumbs very, very firmly press down on it until you get a click and just go around it Make sure it's got a solid connection here at the base too, especially on the corners. And then the top is where I usually tilt it forward and make sure, as you can see here, I missed a couple spots. And then there's one here on the right too. So once that's all clicked into place, it looks good. Another thing I like to test too, if possible, I can't really in this example since it's on a fresh install of 10, but test out your webcam. Make sure your webcam's still working before you put everything back on typically. Well, yeah, I think that's everything. And I really love these ThinkPad T580 models. They're really durable and easy to repair compared to a lot of other models that we work on here. If you have any more questions on this particular one or any part that I didn't really fully cover, leave a comment down below and I'd be happy to make a video as we have these in stock quite often. I hope you're able to learn something new about this computer or took the time to follow along and upgrade or repair a piece that you're having some trouble with. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below and thank you so much for watching. Take care.